us a, an update on, on Jeff, how his foot's doing, and, and do you expect him to be on the field as the every down tight end this week? Absolutely. We do expect him to be on the field, and uh, we expect uh, him to be, you know, a lot healthier than he was the first few games. And, you know, we shut him down, as everyone knows, coming back, uh, you know, the Kent State week and uh, did not practice and has done a lot of conditioning in the tub and try to be very creative in what we can do in the pool setting and take weight off that foot. Uh, came back last week in a bye week, did not practice with us last week during the week. And, and uh, this week uh, he's going to start practicing today. Obviously the questions for us is, is volume and our ability to manage the volume because uh, anybody that doesn't practice for several weeks you know how much can they handle and you know obviously with the bye week we got a plus one day and getting a Monday practice also so we have to manage that volume but uh, you know he I think he feels better than at any time he has since surgery and uh, you know we're really excited to get him on the field he's an outstanding football player truly one of the best tight ends in the country and and we need him healthy for a, a great run here and from the rest of the season and uh, he adds a lot to our offense when he's in there. Coach, uh, you went from the Virginia Tech game where it was kind of a struggle to get much going offensively to the Kent State game where everybody made plays. And just how do you bring everybody back down to earth after that and say, look, it's not going to be this easy going forward? How do you develop that consistency that you need to have? You know, the great thing about it is, and I don't know what Coach Meyer addressed or didn't address, the bowl practices were out. I mean, the bowl practices, the uh, way we had it. The bye week practices were really, really outstanding. When you look at the volume of work that we got done in those bi the bye week practices, the three we had last week, they were excellent. The attention to detail, the energy, uh, the physicality of those practices. So I don't think anybody's sitting there and saying, hey, listen, we're going to live on the laurels of, of the Kent State win. I think the bottom line is we have expectations at Ohio State. There's a lot of people across the country have expectations of Ohio State, and our guys know those. And, and they know that, you know, there's only one way to be really, really good at what you do. And that's to practice at it really, really hard. So I, I was very, very pleased, um, surprisingly pleased in how well each day went. Because, you know, bye weeks sometimes are a little bit um, temperamental. You know, they'll go one day really well and the next day won't be as good. And I thought we had three consecutive high-energy, good physical practices. Uh, Dave. Coach, there have been games where you guys have thrown to the tight end a lot. Purdue last year, uh, the past game against Kent State. Do you guys talk as a staff that going forward you need to continue to do that? Do you guys have those conversations? Is that is it just? I, I think the greatest thing about you know football today, and one of the things that the spread offense allows you to do, and I, I think this is where it's it's really, I think sometimes um, there's a, a little too much importance on the catch of the day or the guy of the day and all that. The bottom line is when you line up eleven guys, right? There's going to be situations where this X and O structure that you're presenting allows for this you know, type of offensive play or this offensive structure. Well, the idea is to take, you know, take the, every play has a weakness and every defense has a weakness. Well, the bottom line is our job is to find that weakness, execute that play against it, and if it involves using the Z, great. If it involves moving the, using the H, great. If it involves tailback screens, great. Is it, to, and the nice thing about our guys is that they don't care as long as we're doing our job and we win. So some weeks, absolutely. You know, there's going to be weeks where they, you know, for whatever reason, their their structure defensively allows us to get the ball to the tight end. We're going to take full advantage of it. If their structure is going to allow us to get the ball to the number two receiver in three by one sets, then that's what we'll need to do because you have to take advantage of the weakness because, it, you know, in college football, they're all good coaches and they'll make adjustments throughout the day. And our job is to continually find the weakness of that structure. And you know, the other day, some of them were obviously the tight end. You see Marcus Ball get a, a touchdown catch. He's a guy, highly recruited player, redshirted last year. Just how far has he come? Talk about his progression, just how far he's You know, how ironic is that? Your first play as a collegiate guy, you know, you come out there and you score a touchdown. Unfortunately, the rest of it wasn't where to, my, to our standards as far as the ability to block guys and continuously block guys, the ability to, to finish those plays. And, and, and you know, I, is he he obviously has a lot of talent there's a lot of good things ahead of him here uh my expectations for him were a little different than his on that game day uh, so as he came in the meeting room on uh, on monday certainly we had things to improve on and you know that's really where it is i i think when you look at a young person um you got to be very highly critical early 
and, and, and you got to say there's an expectation level and, and there's a way that we're going to go about our business and how we're going to, you know, not only that one catch, but what would you do the rest of the day? And uh, obviously I was real excited. I called his mom and dad on the way home and, and uh, you know, really thanked them for uh, allowing him to be at Ohio State. And, and obviously we all know that there were some issues getting him on the field uh, to this point. And so I was very proud of what he did and going out there and catching that touchdown pass and, now the expectation levels behind the scenes is he's got to get better yet, and which you knew he would playing for his very first time on the field. Third row left, Bill. Tim, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. Um, can you reflect a little bit about your time in Cincinnati and what you guys were able to accomplish there, and what it would be like playing against them? Yeah, you know, I was I was very fortunate. You know, when you look at the, the history of UC, uh, I was really there at a very special time period in that history. And obviously, Mark D'Antonio, who was the defensive coordinator, you know, in Ohio State won a national championship in 2002. Uh, he and I talked and ended up going to UC with him. Was there three years and had some, a really nice resurrection of, I think, uh, talent pool, the right kind of kids in the program. And and then, uh, obviously, you know, Brian came in, and I decided to stay with Brian there. And, and uh, you know, what a great run. I mean, it was a phenomenal run. You know, you're an Orange Bowl and a Sugar Bowl. I mean, I tell you, an Orange Bowl and a Sugar Bowl. And, and uh, you know, how special was that when you're a UC guy? It was very, very special. And especially be the first groups really to do that. So that was outstanding. And, and, you know, now there's a lot of people that, you know, between doctors and trainers and, you know, director of ops and those people that are still there that I know very well. Uh, the players have all come and gone in the time I've been gone. But, uh, you know, it, it certainly was a, a great place for me to, to get back into college football and enjoy it. And, and there, listen, the one thing I know, I stood on that sideline twice with the University of Cincinnati coming against Ohio State. And uh, I know how special it is for those guys to come into the stadium and play us. And uh, they're going to be ready. They're going to come in with a lot of enthusiasm. Um, you know, they're going to come in that little chip in the shoulder that, uh, you know, we're the other, you know, that we're that Ohio team also now. And we've got something to prove. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I respect them totally for what I know the players have been in the times that I was there. And, uh, you know, we know that we got to go in and do our job just like we do any other team that comes in our stadium. Why was that? Is it because you have a lot of young players? Was it because you had an early loss? What was it that maybe you guys addressed the bye week differently? You know, I think what's really cool about coaching is that every team is different. You can say whatever you want. we got all these returning starters or we don't have these returning starters and all that. But every time you go on the field, it's a different team. You know, every year you do it. And this team, when you go to practice, just seems to really light up when you go competition. You know, they, they're, they, they, obviously we have our individual drills and we have our group drills. But when you go 11 on 11 with this football team, they're excited. They love to play the game. And so a little bit is, you know what, okay, that's great. We can have another group drill over here. But if we can get more out of 11 on 11 and we can that group drill, let's play more 11 on 11. And, and we're do, doing a nice job of mixing it up with ones versus ones and then also ones versus twos and making sure that we're getting a lot of different tempos and reps and, and looks at, at us. And But when it goes 11-11, it's kind of fun around here. I mean, I, I'm telling you, the guys light up. They enjoy it. They have fun. There's great enthusiasm. And they love to compete. And, and I, you can see improvement by going 11-11. And that's... Is, that's really what practice is for. So I, I, I got to give Coach credit. You know, you know, the other day, I don't know how much he shared with you, but, you know, we had a whole series of other things to do in practice. When in the middle of that practice, we had an 11-11 group that ended up going about 40 minutes. It was scheduled for 10, and I think 40 minutes later, we finished it and skipped a lot of other things because he just loved the tempo and the enthusiasm that our guys were practicing with. They loved to compete, and they loved to play. And, and you look at practice in general, uh, and, and you look at where we are, you know, the NCAA changed rules. You can do some things with them in the summer now. And, and, and you know, they, they're around football all the time. But you know what they love to do? They love to play. And then when you get a chance to get them on the field, and then you got a group of guys that love to play, and, and you know, it, by God, they let them play. And we'll teach off the film and, and, you know, hey, maybe that step wasn't as perfect as we wanted, but let's correct it on film and, you know, don't worry about it on that individual drill. And, and that's really um, this group's kind of that way. They enjoy going 11-on-11. So take good advantage of it. And 
I think it's really it's awesome to do and you know the play callers are calling plays and you really get to feel your personnel and you see who can play more than one play at a time really well and you know and, and now they got to kind of go on the field and coaches step off and because it was really more like game day atmosphere and and uh, we we you know I don't know if you can ever get enough of that and we're staying healthy doing it because guys are practicing smart and and uh, that's really important. such a lingering thing that it's been this far into the season it still is you. Are you surprised? Did you think you would have had him back 100% ready to go before this? I, I don't know if I'm surprised to where we are. You know, you, you look at his injury style and you look what the histories of those injuries have been. And, you know, sometimes – and every person heals different and, and um, you know, maybe, you know, you know, it, it's just one of those you don't know. And obviously the work volume here is great. And and uh, when you go into practices in two days and you look at it, you know, there's that fine line that we have to walk as coaches with an injury. You have to have him game ready because obviously, you, you know, you're going to play Navy up, you know, where we played Navy and Virginia Techs, and you're going to have him great game ready. So even though he's got a lot of experience, you got to have him game ready. Well, if you don't, you can't get game ready unless you practice. And then that fine line is how much practice can he do? And so that's always the fine line. And, uh, you know, it was really, I think, the 100% correct idea to be based on talking to him yesterday that he feels really good and really excited for this week of practice. And now i got to be smart on volume. Coach, uh, Cincinnati's defense is giving up quite a few yards, but they're also they, – they have 11 sacks already this season. Just – what do you see on that side of the ball for the Bearcats? Here's what I know. At 6 o'clock on Saturday, you're going to get the best shot they can Cincinnati can give us. That I believe. You know, they're going to come in here, like I said, very, very hungry, and they're going to give us their best shot. So, the, so you know, that we know. I, I think what they do, I, I think they do a pretty good job of making some guys go some individual blocks rather than, you know, offensive linemen now. They love to be able to get help from their buddy. And I think what they do in some of their schemes and some of the things they do, they make you block that guy individually. Uh, I, I, you know, some of the guys are, are – they just have a good tenacity to them and, and they play – work really hard. And when you get that going, I think that's part of pass rush. You know, there's – not very often you get one just clean. It, it's a guy who strains and gives effort to get there. And not very often you ever see a guy who gets a little help from a buddy ever get to a quarterback. It's those single blocks and those single opportunities that they – they do a pretty good job of winning on. And, you know, they're not a big pressure blitz team. Uh, and sometimes those are the most effective blitz teams because, you you know, all of a sudden when they do, it's like, oh, here it is. You know, instead of those teams where all they do is blitz and eventually you'll begin to manage it. And last question, Tim. Yeah. In a nutshell, Tim, Coach Meyer was talking about he thinks uh, the football, high school football played around Cincinnati is as good as there is. You've seen it. Whatever. What sets it apart? Why is it like? Why is it like that? Why? Why do you guys need a big presence down there recruiting? Well, you, here's the. Well, that's obvious. Yeah, absolutely. Here, here's. When you look at the metropolitan areas, you know, you look at Ohio football in general. This is just my, one man's opinion who's been around Ohio high school football for a long time. A lot of perspectives. Where the jobs are are really good football. Cincinnati economically has done really well, especially in the areas you look at that are winning football games down there. And when you look at those towns where the jobs are in Ohio is where the good football, high school football has been. And right now that's, you know, I lived down there for six years and there's some areas down there that have been doing a great job of producing athletes and producing people. And by golly, I think that's been one of the key things is, you know, you got to have that area. And, and one thing about it too, the, the coaching and the, the size of schools and the competition level and all that just absolutely breeds great football players. And you know what? You go down in that city, high school football is really important. You know, you go to a high school game, there could be, you know, you go to playoff games and the crowds of 30,000 people, 40,000 people. There was a playoff game a few years ago went into, you know, the Paul Brown Stadium. It was like 50,000 people. Well, you know, that's important high school football. And so what happens? You get all those numbers and keep, kids want to play. And, you know, so it, it is a very important area. And obviously we got to get to, you know, Cincinnati's best. And, you know, we want to do that across the state of Ohio anyway. And, it, you know, those great players in Ohio, we want them here in Ohio State, no doubt. Coach, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.